Are you frequently working with Fusion, either in Fusion Studio or in DaVinci Resolve? Then here are seven productivity tips for you that might make your life a bit easier or at least a little bit faster. So in no particular order, let's get started. Tip number one, be aware of and use the automatic placement of tools in the flow area. What do I mean by this? So in the flow area, the next tool you select uh, depends on where you clicked before. So if I click somewhere here in the flow, up here, for example, the next tool will appear here. If I click down here, the next tool will appear here. And it doesn't matter if I use the toolbar or effects library or control space bar. That's just the general tool placement. Now, if I selected a previous node, then the next node will appear typically downstream, but this depends on the type of the node. So if I add a blur, for example, to my media in, it will appear downstream like this. Um, so I can, can blur my image. Now if I select a mask, the mask will automatically be attached to the mask input of the selected node. So I just keep my blur selected. I add an ellipse mask, for example, to make some uh, stupid vignette. Um, then, you know, I, it comes automatically attached to the mask input. If I go back to the blur and now do a transform, it'll again automatically appear downstream. So, so this is uh, dependent on the node, but in most cases it just goes downstream for masks. It gets to the mask input. For a creator nodes, they will be merged automatically together. So for example, a background node is a creator node. I click on it on the media in and it'll get automatically merged. And in most cases, it gets merged exactly the wrong way. So you click the merge and press Control T, which switches background and foreground. So very quick tip just to uh, change this and then things are back in the order you probably want it. Then of course you might have to move things around. So if I have to move a single tool around like this transform, um, I might take it out of the flow by pressing the shift key, keep the shift key pressed and I can bring it back in the flow somewhere else like this. So, so this way I can quickly rearrange my notes. This also works if you have uh, two notes. So what was this? This was the transform. So just to illustrate, um, if I have two notes at the, or if I have a whole branch of notes, it also works as long as I have the whole branch selected. Single blur, if I press the shift key, I will just take it out. But if I take the whole branch, I can move the whole branch around and bring it back in, which is probably what I wanted to do here in this case. Okay, so with these simple tricks of uh, shift dragging and uh, being intentional about which tool you selected before you bring in the next tool, so this way you can work a bit more uh, intentional and a bit faster. Tip number two, reuse your comps. In some cases you build something wonderful and you can use the exact same effect again, but I think more often you just did something interesting in one comp and in a different project sometime later you remember it and you think oh, maybe I need something similar and you just want to look at it again, right? So in Fusion Studio that's straightforward because you have your Fusion comps on, on the file system and you can open multiple comps next to each other in tabs and so on. In DaVinci Resolve it's a bit more tricky because in DaVinci Resolve everything is buried in the DaVinci Resolve projects, right? So your comp is linked to the clip on which you're working in the timeline which is inside a project. Now you can use stuff like dynamic project uh, switching and switch between projects to, to look at previous work, but it's still a bit difficult to find it. So here are a few ideas what you can do. One thing you can do is you can still do the classical way from Fusion Studio and import and export Fusion comp files. So you can export a file to disk and from disk load it again. So the, the just the Fusion comp file, just the compositing script which you export and import. Another option if you build something which you really know can be used again and again, then you might want to make a macro or, or save it as a template. Uh, I created a tutorial before about templates and macros, so you might want to have a look at this. Um, uh, sometimes it's an even quicker way in Resolve to just put stuff into power bins and that also works with fusion comps. So on the edit page, if you have a, a fusion composition or a clip with a fusion comp, uh, you can put that into power bins under view show power bins you can enable disable power bins and if you are using those uh, those are bins which are stored across projects so they're part of the resolve database not part of a specific project so whatever you have in the timeline you can um, put in your 
uh, media pool and can, can put into a power bin and then later access again from this power bin. Now, depending on what happens to your projects, maybe your media will no, no longer be linked or is no longer available in the new project, um, but at least you have access to the comp file. So if you have built a certain logic which you want to revisit again or so, you can um, do that more quickly than by switching projects. Number three, work with versions. So if you're in Fusion Studio, you just can use file versions. If you are in DaVinci Resolve, you have clip versions here on the, on the clip panel. If you enable this, you can here see versions. So by default, it's called Composition 1. You can rename it and you can create new versions. So if you want to try something crazy or you don't know if it works out, just quickly click Create New Composition. It will copy whatever you currently have into a new version. Afterwards, you see here Composition 1, Composition 2. You can just keep working on the new version. If you want to start completely from scratch, also do this afterwards, click reset. This way you reset the copy but, and you can start from scratch completely from a blank sheet, but you still have the old one so you can always go back. If you're just experimenting with some parameters, work with versions inside the tools. So in the tools you have here this tab and you have here uh, tool versions one to six and you can just go to the next tab. It will again copy the current settings and now you can come up with new settings and this will be now saved in the new version and you can go back to the previous tool version just for an individual tool. Again, very helpful for experimenting, but still keeping the previous uh, one and you, you can switch back if, it, if your experiment failed. So whether it's on an individual tool or on the whole flow, always make sure obviously that when you try something new that you can still go back and see what you did before. Next tip, memorize tool names so that you can get them via the control spacebar tool menu. I frequently use this bar, but of course not all tools are here. And uh, if you work really fast, you might not even want to click on this bar, but stay with your hands on your keyboard. And for example, getting a transform can be as fast as this. And if that was too fast for you to see, the reason why I got this is because I know that, first of all, I know the name of the tool, it's transform, but I don't even have to type transform. Uh, there are these shortcuts behind. So for transform, it's just XF and you get the transform and for the most common tools, I don't know, like Boolean or Merge, I, I tend to know even these acronyms, but even if you don't know them and, and just type the name of the tool, render, uh, you know, you, you get them very quickly. So that's definitely faster than going via the effects library and finding them here. So what I suggest is, I don't suggest to you know brute force memorize, but I suggest that every time you are looking for a new tool um, and you, you find a tool and you say, oh, I want to use this, try this highlight tool. Instead of clicking here, I just say, oh, what's the name? It's highlight. Okay, I might close it again and try to get it again from here. And just by typing, if, if I, every time I use a tool, if I type it, um, I also me memorize the name, at least that's for me. If I, if I type them like three, four times, then I, I definitely know the tool and I don't have to search for it anymore. I just go by, by the name from then onwards. Um, so I don't know all the acronyms, obviously, from every single tool, uh, just from the very frequent one like, like Blur and Transform and Merge and so on. I know these acronyms from other tools. I, I vaguely know the name and I start typing the name uh, and, and then um, I, I might find the tool directly here in this list rather than going through the menu. Next tip number four is kind of the default tip for all software applications, learn the keyboard shortcuts. Now in Fusion there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts and I created a small sheet sheet which you can uh, print out and put next to you if you want to. If it's overwhelming to you, here's just a tip where I would start. First of all, I think it's very helpful to be able to navigate the timeline quickly. So uh, of course playback and stop and then maybe also reverse play. Uh, these are the things which are helpful. Navigating between keyframes is very helpful. So, uh, so Alt, Left, Right key, you can jump between the keyframes. Um, then your viewer controls can be helpful. So sometimes uh, the viewer controls are in the way. So then if I click into the viewer and click Control K, I can turn them on and off. This can sometimes be nice. Um, of course, moving through the channels like RGB, Alpha, uh, back to color, RGB, A are the keys that's uh, easy to remember. Um, beyond the playback and viewer controls, it's nice to look at some of the frequent um, spline 
screen control. So this is helpful for different areas. So for example, let me just quickly make a rotor spline here with the polygon. Um, so if I just have a few points here, um, I can adjust points, for example, with S to make shift S to make them smooth and shift L to make them linear. And there are a few more uh, controls for, for polylines, which are very helpful. The nice thing is it works here for this type of masking, but the same controls also work in the spline editor if you have any, um, any keyframes. So you can also uh, use the same controls, uh, shift S, shift L, you can use them here. And there are a few more like flatten and so on. Um, or even if you if you're using curves, for example, then you have the same principle again, let's say I have a curve editor here. Um, and I do changes here. Again, I have uh, splines in here. So if you have a good understanding of how to manipulate these spline controls, um, you can use them in the spline editor or in the curves editor or just when you're attaching masks. So it's a kind of recurring thing. So it's, it's good to, to know some of the more frequent um, keyboard shortcuts there. Next one, tip number six is just a little bit of organizational help. Use pipe routers. So Sometimes you see these little rectangles. If I press the Alt key and click somewhere onto a line here, onto a pipe, then I get this, what is called pipe router. Uh, it doesn't do anything at all like this, except giving me the ability to move the connection around, the pipe around. So this can be helpful in multiple instances. For example, if I, let's say I, I, I have to branch out uh, into different parts of the flow. Let's say I have different, I just put the merge nodes for illustration. Let's say I have different logic. I do, I branch out into, into different sections. Then I might just put a pipe router before and this way I can, you know, get to um, each of the, the branches like this. And it, I might uh, remain more organized than uh, just having things flying across the screen with a lot of diagonal lines. I mean, assuming that this is, you know, uh, maybe this is down here and I, I'm using more stuff here. So, uh, and I have more logic here. So I'm, I'm using just one connection rather than uh, plenty. So that's one way how I use the pipe router. And the other thing is if you start to see like crossing lines and so on and your flow gets messy, sometimes it can just help to route around the corner and make things a bit more neat and organized. So if I, if I need to go up like this, maybe I just go up and intentionally go like around the corner rather than having some strange crossing diagonal line, which can get messy and confusing. So this way it can help to keep the flow clean. Last tip, and even though I said no particular order, this tip may be the most important one. Stay organized with your flow. Um, here is a simple test. Open a comp which you created more than one week ago. If you were already using Fusion, that is, so one month old comp or from last year, something you worked on, uh, open it and see how long it takes for you to understand what you were doing at that time. If it takes more than one minute to get a general idea of what you were doing, then probably you were not organized very well or not very consistent. Um, so just a few general tips. Typically, I work from left to right and from top to bottom, like we also read, at least in most parts of the world. So building your comp in the same direction makes sense. You work background to foreground, usually if it's in, in 2D. Um, then you can use organizational tools like these pipe routers that I just showed you. You can use grouping. If something belongs together, you can press Control G and get it into a group or you can use these colorful underlays. Some people prefer that. So there's this underlay to just mark a certain region highlighted in colors. Um, rename what you need to rename. I don't rename everything. If something is called blur, I probably know what it's doing. But if something is called media in one, media in two, media in three to media in 10, then okay. So maybe I should have renamed this, right? So uh, try to build your own practices over time. See what other people are doing, not only me, right? And um, see what works best for you. The important thing is to remain consistent and to come up with something so that when you look at your own stuff, uh, you are not getting confused. And while working, you can quickly navigate around and, and can focus on the actual problem rather than um, something which is just, you know, um, confusing yourself and adding additional uh, logic problem to your head besides the logic that you're actually building. 
So these were the seven tips or seven topics I could think of. If you have tip number eight, please share it in the comments underneath for the greater benefit of the community. For those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you may have noticed that I didn't post tutorials over the last two months or so. Um, and that's because I was traveling. I was first in Germany for Christmas and then in India for Sankranti and working remotely in between, but I was away from my studio here which is in the Middle East actually. So now I'm back and I'm trying to get back into a weekly habit of tutorials. Let's see if I can keep up with this. Um, I have planned a few more like productivity related general tutorials and then there will also be again some more intense compositing stuff um, coming in a few weeks, months, let's see. Um, so either way I'm happy to be back and see you next week. Thanks for watching. You're just trying to get it right